Hi, my name's John Crowell from Crowell's Creations Custom Painting. On this week's Crimsafe Talking Tech, I'm going to show you how to turn a standard boring looking helmet into a custom painted work of art. Initially, when, once I get a call from a customer, I'll take some notes from them about uh, what they would like to achieve, what sort of designs they may like, if they've got any ideas in mind. And once we've established that, I can start to put together some drawings and sketches. Sometimes people will supply me with a, uh, an actual sketch that they've already put together, which is fantastic. The more information I can get from them, the better. Um, sometimes people don't have any real ideas, so I have to just tease it out of them a little bit and get to know their likes and dislikes and then I'll take all that information and I'll incorporate it into a design and uh, we can work from that towards the final custom paintwork. So once I've collected a lot of information from a customer, I've written it down on their job sheet, I'll take a, uh, a blank template like this and I'll start to work on the design and create aspects of it. So what I'd be doing is just keeping the lines fairly traditional with regards to what most people might consider a motorsports helmet as opposed to a, uh, say, a, a motorcycle design or something which has got a whole lot going on all the time. Generally, car racers helmets are nice, clean and simple. So once I've finalised the sketch, I'll add some colour, just with ordinary uh, coloured pencils. It communicates the idea very effectively. Sometimes if people do want a computer generated design, I'm more than happy to do that. But uh, a nice hand rendering normally communicates the ideas quite well. Once that's happened, I'll send a design to the customer and we can talk about it and I'll make any notations about any designs that they, uh, any aspects of the designs they'd like to alter um, and any additions, logos where they might go, might go and uh, their name or any other little points like that can be finalised at that point. Then it's on to the actual helmet itself. To prep the helmet, in order to start sanding, what I do is take a, uh, off a few of the more basic parts that just generally tend to get in the way, so the visor, the internal cheek pads, a few of the vents and those sorts of things. Um, typically the rubber trim will be removed as well to give us a lot cleaner line and uh, sometimes the base rubber as well. Just the vents and those sorts of things get painted independently, so when everything goes back together it's a nice, neat, uh, factory looking fit. So when I get a nice white helmet like this one, which most of them are, it's just a matter of sanding it uh, lightly to key the surface so the paint has something to stick strongly to. The sanding process itself takes about three quarters of an hour per helmet. Once the uh, helmet's been sanded properly, um, I apply masking tape and uh, coverings to areas that we don't want paint to get to and then I'll apply the base colour. In this case, obviously, it's red, but at the end of the process, probably not a great deal of that red will be showing. Um, the process of painting a helmet involves multiple layers of paint being applied, and the original colour may only form something as small as pinstripes or uh, small features on the helmet. In this case, obviously, it's red. This is the design that's going to uh, be applied to this helmet. And as you can see from the, uh, the design, there's only a limited amount of red that's going to be uh, visible in the final design. Sometimes multiple layers can include several different layers within that colour. So again, with this example, there's a uh, reasonable area of white and a reasonable area of black. Um, but within those two areas themselves there'll be multiple build-up of different shades and patterns and so forth so it can get quite, quite complicated and that's where a lot of the time comes into the custom paintwork. Uh, it depends on how much detail a customer would like to go into. As you saw on the helmet, uh, the red helmet I was just working on, that's a very uh, freeform design, uh, more swooping lines and no 
specific structure to it. The one that I'm going to do here and put some paint on is actually more of a uh, regimented design, more straight lines and so forth. So I use this little contraption here to help me get nice, uh, precise, level lines. Okay, so now that we've got this uh, masked up, it's ready for the first layer of paint. As you can see, the spray gun is used for larger areas of paint and um, the less detailed sort of application of paint. When I need to apply detailed uh, artwork and shading and graphics and those sorts of things. I'll use a range of different airbrushes as you can see here. Um, the one that I probably use most is this one. It's a very very fine tipped airbrush and then as we progress through the range they get slightly coarser in their uh, nozzle size so it really depends on what I'm doing. What I'm going to do now though is apply some basic drop shadows to some artwork here. So as you've seen from the processes we've just been through, um, it's, a pr it's a matter of just building up layers of different paint, adding the effects with the airbrush as we go, and uh, adding artwork to each individual section. And as you can see on this helmet, which is uh, nicely finished now after many, many hours of uh, layering different uh, colours and airbrushing in different effects, there's considerable detail that can go into a particular piece. This one, for instance, has probably 15 layers of different paint on it and uh, as you can see in the blue there there's many different effects that can be painted in just one particular area. Once the, uh, all the colour has been applied we apply a very very thick coat of clear and that helps build up and bury all the little individual levels of paint. I then sand that back so it's nice and smooth and then I'll apply another a layer of clear which is generally called a flow coat to get a really beautiful high gloss finish but even after then I'll run a buff over it to shine it up even more. Once that's complete I reassemble the helmet put the chin straps back in, the visor, the rubber trims, all those sorts of things so we end up with a complete finished helmet here and just to give you an idea this particular helmet probably took around 50 or 60 hours I lost count it took so long um, once it's ready to go, I give the customer a call, they come and collect it, the next time we see it is on a racetrack. We've been robbed a couple of times actually. So we had this screen installed. For cheap alternative. They look identical, so you think you're getting an equivalent product and you're not. Most Crimsafe lookalikes can pop out because they're only held in with a piece of plastic. But Crimsafe screw clamp locks the mesh and spreads the impact. Solid and steady and definitely instills a lot of confidence in us. If you pay for what you get, Crimsafe is definitely the way to go. Better off paying the extra and getting the better product. Because if it's not Crimsafe, it's not Crimsafe.